Hi, I'm Daniel with the Airplanes in the Wild YouTube channel. Behind me is a Super Cub, very similar to one that you could win. Every May, the Alaska Airmen's Association gives away an airplane. And this year's raffle plane is currently being built here at Dan Cheney Aero on Wolf Lake Airport. We're gonna stop in and meet Dan Cheney's founder, Junior Daniel. Learn more about him, his company, and this raffle airplane. Is there audio? Yeah. What's up, motherf***? <laughs> <laughs> The, the thing about you that impresses me as a builder is you're here on the same airport as me. Mm -hmm. I see you flying and you're in and out all the time. And I see the condition that it's in. I can tell it's been used, right? And I think that's a very good sign for a builder. If you had a pristine airplane that looked like it hadn't been used, it's like, well, does he know how to build an airplane that does get used? Yeah. And that's the cool thing about you. What's your design philosophy? So you start with structure. Any form of structure you can add to the aircraft, you want to add that because you're going you're going to beat the airplane. From that point, any way that you can cut weight out of it mm -hmm. that is non-structural, you cut weight out of it. You make it as light as possible. You move any weight that you can forward because you can always throw a sleeping bag in the tail of the plane to counter your CG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And any way that you can develop more lift or achieve lift faster, which is going to be power or wing. And you put a smaller wing on, put a bigger engine, or put a big wing on with a big engine. I love that combo. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we at on this horsepower to wing on this airplane? Are, it, it's a lot of horsepower and a lot of wing. Are yeah, that, yeah, we, we have a pretty big wing that's going on this airplane. Okay. Um, today the engine shows up and I will have a dyno sheet when the engine shows up. I don't know exactly how much horsepower we're producing with, with the engine that's going on it. It should be north of 180 horse. So this project needs to be done by when? In order to make the May, the first weekend in May is when they're giving it away. Yeah. W when does it need to be done? Uh, we need this thing done in February. February? Yep. Okay, that's yep. exciting. I, I didn't realize you were that close. The product that you're turning out is incredible. The fit and finish is excellent. And Thank we're you. gonna go look at this one and see. So this is it, kind of what we're expecting. There's some differences, yeah. but this is your latest build, beautiful plane. And I wanna talk a little more about that. But before that, can we talk about your business? Mm -hmm. What services do you offer here? The thing that we like doing the most is aircraft builds. Uh, along with that, we do anything that has to do with the Super Cub. Okay. So float changes, ski changes, maintenance, engine overhauls, airframe overhauls, major repairs, major alterations. Awesome. So if, if I have you build an airplane for me, I can know that you're going to be able to take care of it for the next 10 years. Correct. And then I know you're doing some parts stuff. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. So we've, we've established a partnership with uh, Stewart Systems and Jabron. Okay. One of the problems we were running into is it was taking us forever to get wings. So we started buying wings from Jay. Okay. And you know, we were stocking them up here. We're building them on a table over there. We can build a wing identical to getting it from the source at Jabron. Awesome. Uh, Stewart Systems, we we're stocking all the Stewart Systems stuff here now. Another thing that we're trying to do is stock engines as well. Are these going to be certified engines or? Um, right now they're experimental engines. Okay. Uh, brand new experimental engines. So if, you, if you're flying around, you got a season going and uh, something happens, you could just be like, hey, I'm going to bring you my airplane. And then pull an engine off, put an engine on. A couple days, on. I'm back flying. Two days later, you're back at it. Wow. Kind of the way that I established the business is not it's not centered around how much labor I can get out of a job, it's how fast I can get the job out and then put time into someone else's. Mm -hmm. So you're going for value added rather than just, I'm gonna bill you for your time. Correct. I like that. And you know, along with that, another thing they get is I will show up. If they, if they damage their plane in the mm -hmm. woods and they call, I will show so you're up. Like a, you're like, a, you're selling a product that comes with a service, a yeah. continued service. Yeah. That's huge because it's really difficult to find someone that's reliable to maintain an aircraft. Like that's a whole nother skill. Mm -hmm. 
And so you're the person that built it, you know everything about it, and you can maintain it for years to come. Yes. All right, so let's look at the plane here and sort of learn more about the raffle plane that you're building based on this one that you're just about to finish. Oh, that sounds great. So the paint scheme that you're doing on the raffle, it's gonna be gray and black, right? Correct. I love your paint scheme. I love the design. When Thank I you. first saw it, I don't know if you remember, but my wife was like, that is the most beautiful plane I've ever seen. Yeah. And I was like, eh. <laughs> but as I've watched you fly it, I don't know if it's just because the plane performs well, <laughs> that it's subconsciously gotten to me that I associate that with performance and now I love it. But I love your paint scheme. I love the way the plane looks and I'm super happy that I'm getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've thought about buying a ticket for it. <laughs> but Can you buy a ticket? Are well, you allowed? Yeah. Can you do anything to I, help me win it? I, <laughs> do you have any inside edge? <laughs> <laughs> I could buy a ticket for it, but then I think about when they draw it, if they draw my name, I'm going to have to give the ticket back to them because I can't take the plane. Yeah, that <laughs> would just be... wouldn't be right. And yeah, that, that would, would be, be hard. <laughs> you could do a surrogate. <laughs> I'll be... <laughs> and you'll be like, Daniel, we had a deal. I'll be like, huh? Who are you? <laughs> so tell us about the engine prop and just sort of firewall for juicy details. We have, we have ideas of what makes a, a really powerful engine. We don't have 30 years experience putting engines together, mm -hmm. but Aero Recip does. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what happened is we, we had a meeting with one of their uh, most seasoned builders and pretty much gave him the idea of the things that we wanted in it and gave him free reign to produce the most powerful 360 that he could produce. So we're gonna have an experimental cam in it. We're gonna have higher compression pistons. Any way that we can pull power out of the engine, that's, that's the direction we're going with it. I am expecting I it that. to be somewhere in the ballpark of 200 horse. The prop is a brand new prop, not just brand new in regards to it's going to be new going on the plane, but brand new to the scene. Um, so it's an 86 inch uh, ground adjustable Kato. Oh. Yeah, we should be getting a brand new one for the raffle cup. Awesome. So with the ground adjustable Kato and a possibly 200 plus horse engine on the front, this thing's gonna rip. It should be really exciting. You should be able to feel it in your neck when you take off. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> is this the exhaust that's going on? This is. Okay, and this is which, which exhaust is this? Uh, Rupert exhaust. The heating on it is amazing. Most, most of your cubs, the cabin heat is awful. Mm. This exhaust heats up quite well. Okay. So the, the baffling is a Rupert baffling. The exhaust is a Rupert exhaust. The air box is a Rupert air box and the lower cowling is a Rupert lower cowling. We use this configuration because one, it's very maintenance friendly. Two, it gives us the ability to move weight further forward. Okay. And another, another benefit you get behind doing that is you open your firewall up. So now mm -hmm. you can put your electrical system up on your firewall. Mm -hmm. When you heat your engine, you're also heating your electrical system, you're heating your battery, you're heating your solenoids, you're heating everything needed to make your engine start running, mm. to make your instruments come on, along with you're getting all that wiring out of the out of the inside of the fuselage. That's very cool. So if your wires are shorter, less weight, less weight. <laughs> I love it. New technology. Okay, so we're here at the interior, the panel. It's not the same panel you're doing in the raffle cup. Correct. But it is close to what you would do in like your favorite airplane. Yeah, I, I really like this panel. This thing has a G3X, a G5, a Garmin um, autopilot. It's so got a transponder down here. There's a GTR200D radio up at the front. It all integrates into the G3X, so they're remote mounted. The cost of this panel, yeah, what's the is, cost difference? Is is more than a, is more than a new vehicle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that we're going to make the Raffle Cubs panel cheap by no means. Right, but this but is a very expensive. This is panel. a sixty to seventy thousand yeah. dollar panel. The one that's going in the Raffle Cubs is more like a thirty to forty thousand dollar panel. That's still significant. Yeah. You're still going to get a really nice airplane. I mean, yeah. I'm going to get a really nice airplane. <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> Is there anything else you want to talk about on the panel? Like the um, the location of everything. What's your philosophy yeah. there? How we put these things in. 
is how I want to use it. Yeah. If you have a guy that builds your dash and doesn't fly that aircraft, doesn't doesn't use it to its fullest potential, he's just putting switches and holes and knobs and holes and you end up with a bunch of stuff down low that you, every time you climb in the plane, you hit your knees yeah. on and you end up bending stuff and breaking things. This bottom part of the panel, mm -hmm. we try to bring it up as high as absolutely yeah. possible. Why not? To give you as much leg, spray, uh, leg space as you can. And that also opens up the map pocket so you can use the map pocket. Okay. Let's talk about the map. <clears throat> we have map pockets on both sides and you don't realize how great that is until you have it. Nothing goes on the dash anymore. It all goes yeah. in the map pocket. All right, so then the rest of the interior is carbon. Is there anything else? Other than the seats, you gotta talk about the seats. Yeah, we gotta talk about the seats. <laughs> Full uh, disclosure, the, yeah. I made this. <laughs> this is my company. When we were refining what kind of product we were going to put in our aircraft, the last part of it was the finish, what, mm -hmm. what you're going to see all the time. The best seats relative to weight and mm -hmm. cost is, I'm, is yours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree, I, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I mean, for real, it, it, it is. They're very comfortable. I've sat in the seat for eight hours mm -hmm. continuously, yeah. and I'm comfortable in mine. I think the seat is a representation of the rest of the build. Yes. And because it's really the first thing you see when you look in the airplane, you see those stitches and stuff. And I like to, when I look at a plane like this and I see my stitching, and I, I, I go, I like the way my product looks in your plane, but it's really a compliment to your plane. Mm -hmm. Because to me, this tells the story of what's underneath that panel. Yes. Uh, because that's the kind of decisions you make. And I really like that. Okay, so moving back to this area, this is one of my favorite parts of your, your plane here, which is these doors. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about the doors? The doors are a bit of a refinement from, uh, I flew a couple of cubs around that didn't have them. Yeah. <laughs> and they had extended baggage. My issue was getting meat bags out of the back mm -hmm. of it. In order to get the meat bag out of it, you'd have to lift the thing up and you'd drag it across the door frame to get it out. Yeah. So we dropped the door frame down to the floorboard. We put cam locks in it, the Southco fasteners, to fasten the door into place and therefore you don't need as much structure because the whole door is held up against the fuselage. Gotcha. Okay, and let's look at this door. So we don't have a shelf, but it's more optimal this way, you think, because you can access everything in the extended baggage. Correct. And then if there is light things like a sleeping bag, it'll actually already stay up here. Yep. So I had I had this cub and it had this little bitty baggage door in it. Mm -hmm. I was out guiding and I, I think I was out there 12 days. It's not favorable weather to fly in. Yeah. And I get out there and you know, I'm standing in ankle deep water and my rain gear was right there but it had a shelf in it. Mm -hmm. So either A, I unpacked the whole plane into the water yeah. to get my rain gear out of it, or B, I make a access to it. So you made I, an access? I took my knife out and I made an access to it. And <laughs> it, it was- uh, In field refinement. <laughs> yeah. That was when I decided I'm never putting that in again. If a client wants it, we'll yeah. do it, but I'm going to push people not to because this is a, this is a better alternative. This gives you more versatility all right, so these doors are cool. Let's talk about what fabric system you use and why. We use Stewart Systems Fabric. There, there was a time where people were having problems with the paint bubbling off. Within the first two years, it would start bubbling okay. off. It's, it's a problem they were having specifically in, specifically in Alaska due to the changes in moisture. Mm -hmm. I also had that same problem before I decided to start using their product. Right. Initially, we used polyfiber. I was pretty hardcore on polyfiber and that was the only thing that we were going to use. And one day we met with Andy at the Airman's Gathering, mm -hmm. the, owner, the owner of Stewart Systems. Okay and told him the problem we were having and he said that he would fix it. Where the shortfalls come into play is either the fabric isn't sealed with the glue to prevent moisture from attacking the UV protection from the inside mm. or people try to conserve weight by not putting the recommended amount of paint on the aircraft. Mm. If you don't put the recommended amount of paint on the aircraft, moisture attacks it through the paint. Mm. And so. Stewart system is a certified system, correct? It is a certified so system. So what that means is that they went through the testing yes. and they've proven that it works. Yes. And if it's not working, you're doing it wrong. Correct. It sounds to me like if you want to get it right, that maybe 
the polyfiber system is easier to get right. Correct. For, for sort of someone starting out. Yeah. But there's a huge upside to Stewart system that's worth the trouble of learning how to do it right. Yes. And what is that upside? Uh, that upside is I'm going to be here 20 years from now to keep <laughs> doing it. Yeah, I love that. And right now, John's over here yeah. doing fabric work. Yeah. And we're not smelling. Oh, man. Tubes. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, we've been in here with this plane that the, the glue was put on last night. And then we've been in here all morning and he's been working for 20 minutes now and I smell nothing. Yes. So you are selling Stuart System products? Yes. And you're also, you've been offering some classes here and there. Yes. Here in Wasilla, Wolf Lake Airport. Yep. I think that's a great thing. People can look you up just for that. I mean, yeah. that's really a good thing. That you're yeah. Doing. So we're a distributor for Alaska and a portion of Canada as well. Cool. Thanks for showing us this aircraft and, and kind of giving us a picture of what the, uh, the raffle plane will look like. I want to look at some of the other things you're doing in here and some of the other stuff you offer, like the, the wings and, and stuff. So let's go over the other part of your shop and look at that. Sounds good. Okay, so we're here with the wings that we talked about. You are selling fully assembled wings. We've got a round tip wing here. There's a couple squared off wings up there and you have these in stock to buy. Yep. Where are they at in the assembly process? What all is included? I see pulleys here. I see um, um, control surfaces. So what you're getting with this is a wing that's ready to be fabriced. Okay. It's gonna come with control surfaces. It's gonna come with uh, fuel tanks. It's gonna come with tank covers. You'll need to put cables in and you'll need to put wires in. That's it. Gotcha. Are you assembling these here? Yes. This is a great option for an experimental aircraft because yes. you can just buy a wing that's done light, very strong and completely assembled. Yep. Well, Junior, thanks for showing us around. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to say, if you want to buy tickets for the Raffle Cub, they're at the Airman's website. You can yeah. buy tickets. Do you yeah. guys, I know there's some locations people can buy them physically, but basically you, you can just go on the website there and buy them. The money is like a donation, really. <laughs> I mean, the ticket price will go to donate to a worthy cause, the Airman's Association, and then maybe you win. Yeah. But probably not, because I'm going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a service to the aviation community by building this. I really want to thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah.